Let's move on to the bin test. I thought the solid aluminum body would do a much better job of holding this phone together, but I was actually really, really surprised at how easy this phone was to bend. Now onto the bin test. After the initial bending with my hands, you can tell that there is a slight curve to the body of the phone. This is not surprising and is pretty much old news with the whole bin gate fiasco. When I applied the same amount of pressure to the HTC M9, which is HTC's most recent phone, it folded in half. So in reality, the iPhone 6 Plus is holding up much better than I expected. The minor initial bend could be straightened out pretty easily. But I'm not here to play patty cake with the iPhone though, so let's keep going. After a lot more pressure, I finally got the screen to break. Let's move on to the bin test. As you can see, the phone is still fully functional at this point, although it is probably angry with me. I am going to apply a little bit of pressure and yikes. I am being completely serious when I say my little sister could have bent this phone in half with her hands. Now onto the bin test. This phone broke faster than a soggy graham cracker. Let's move on to the bin test. This robin did not make it very far from the nest. Now we're on to the bin test. I've tested over 27 phones now and only four have failed catastrophically. This Yumi Super does flex a little when I try to bin the phone from the back, but it does not break, so it does not fail the bin test. But when I rotate the phone to see the front, I notice that the softer glass has cracked from the scratch that I previously made on the screen. It is rather unfortunate that the glass cracked from the flex, but this particular failing point, the cracking, is also very easily prevented. Even the cheapest of screen protectors would have kept the screen free from scratches thus protecting it from cracking during the bend test. Even when flexing the phone from the other direction, it will not bend or break. It is very sturdy. There is a small ripple in the metal near the SIM card tray that is easy to fix. The most unfortunate part of this test is the edge-to-edge -edge crack. The digitizer is broken for everything below that line. So the top half of the phone will respond to touches, but the bottom half of the phone, the part below the crack, will not. So the phone is effectively inoperable at this point. Let's start the bend test. As we start the flex, it is immediately reminiscent of the Redmi 3 Pro. With the screen flexing out of the frame, you can see the plastic edge crack on the display. The major difference here is when the Note 3 screen actually comes up and out of the back panel. I was not expecting that to happen, as it seems like common sense to screw all the components together instead of free float them. It is built very similar to the HTC M9, which also failed the bin test. Now it's time for the bin test. I've tested about 50 different phones on my YouTube channel. I agree, it's a slightly strange hobby. I've only had five of these 50 phones catastrophically fail. Most phones are pretty well built, budget phones included among the flagships. But this phone in particular doesn't quite make it. Now the bin test. Testing the overall build quality of a phone is essential to the people who want a phone that will survive everyday life. And unfortunately, this BlackBerry Key 1 is not a survivor. I was even holding the screen when it popped out of the frame. It surprised me to see the screen do that, since most other screens, like Samsung, have so much adhesive behind them it takes a high-powered heat gun or industrial hot plate to remove them. And this BlackBerry screen is held in by nothing. A quick bend from the other side, and at this point my screen stopped functioning entirely. Now the bend test. The U11 almost has the same basic build and design of the U Ultra, with one fatal difference. When applying pressure from the back, the flexible and squeezable metal frame allows the device to bend more than it should. And that becomes a real problem when it flexes from the front. And it's dead. Now for the bin test. Bin tests are important because they show how structurally sound a phone is, and gives us a general idea of how well it'll hold up over time, with accidental abuse. Remember, I've tested over a hundred phones, and the vast majority of the phones I test survive. Even the previous motorized Vivo Nex. Commencing the bend on the Oppo Find X, I instantly knew something was wrong with this phone. It bent way too far, and never locked out or stopped bending like most phones do. 
Some parts of the phone can handle the flex, like the metal frame, but one thing that can't handle the flexing is the rigid and brittle AMOLED display panel. That display underneath the glass cracks, rendering the screen pretty useless since the colors now have a mind of their own. The back panel starts lifting off and both the front and rear glass shatter into oblivion. It's time for the bin test. Structural integrity is still important, and the iPad Pro just doesn't have any of that structural integrity stuff. A tablet the size of a piece of paper folds like a piece of paper. I do feel bad for Spider-Man though. I'll try to straighten him out. Perfect. The ultimate test of structural durability is the bin test. With the plastic frame on the Redmi Note 7, I have my doubts about its strength. The first bend shows some massive flex on both the frame and the screen, but no shattering, cracking, or breaking. I do always bend the phones from both sides though. And with the reverse flex, we get two cracks in the plastic frame, one next to the power button and one along the SIM card tray. The phone is still alive, not too shabby. The Note 7 can definitely handle some abuse and still keep kicking. One last bend for the road. And without the structural support along both cracked side rails, the screen is unable to survive. The LCD cracks underneath the glass surface, rendering the display useless, and the touch sensitivity fails completely. It's not a good day for the Redmi Note 7. This is not the first Xiaomi phone to fail my durability test. This Note 7 will join the Note 3 and the Mi 5 on my shelf of shame. It's time for the bin test. Remember, most phones survive this test just fine. I'll start from the back, and with a subtle flex, with no noises or cracks, the first bend of the iPod Touch absolutely destroys the display underneath the glass. There's no external damage, but the internal damage is catastrophic. The screen is broken, and the device is unresponsive. Now it's time for the bin test. What happens if the phone is laid flat and grandma sits on it? Well, to be honest, it actually flexes quite a bit in the wrong direction, with no damage. Going from the flat 180 degrees all the way to a 270 degree, three quarter circle before the hinge finally snapped in half, breaking at two points. But the phone itself is still turned on and functional, even after bending in the complete opposite and wrong direction. One wrong fold at an angle pinched the screen in a way that finally cracked it right down the center. I think it's time. Let's say you leave your phone on the couch face down, and Great Aunt Susie comes over to ask why you didn't bring a special someone with you to the family reunion. She sits down and... Now your screen is unresponsive and has a cool new four-point design in the center. Not from the rock that got caught earlier, but from some physical component inside of the hinge. That's under the display poking through the back of the screen. Each of the four corners of whatever that rectangle object is under there just got smushed into the soft backside of the screen. After turning the screen off and then back on again, the phone does return to functionality, but the four pixels do not recover. The phone is still functional, even after the screen is punctured from the back. The hinge is, you know, bent backwards and it's a little more floppy than usual. Something's broken inside, aren't we all? But it's still rather incredible the phone is still able to function like normal. That deserves a thumbs up. Touching down at the bottom edge of the display, however, immediately kills the entire row of pixels running up the screen. I'll test my theory again by touching over here on the right side. Yep, definitely a bad idea. If the fold gets too tight and the screen actually gets creased, the whole thing dies completely. And it's over. We now know the limit of the new Motorola Razr. Now remember, smartphone durability isn't everything. It's just one of the many aspects to consider when buying a phone. A good protective case can solve many structural issues, and the OnePlus Nord does have some structural issues. Nothing major happens with the first bend from the back, even though the phone was left a little kinked. It's only when bending from the front that we hear the first snap. I try not to get spooked when my phone cracks, but I am only human. It turns out it was the frame near the volume button. And once that last shred of structure was gone, the rest of the screen was soon to follow. The interesting thing to note here though is that the entire phone is still mostly fine. The exterior glass is not cracked at all, on both the front and back surfaces. It's just the interior display underneath the glass that's broken. Cracked like a potato chip or a robin's egg. 
Even our swooping eagle probably can't protect the iPad from its own little microphone hole. It really is in the worst spot. The design flaw is still a design flaw. Who would have thought? With just one bin, the iPad Pro second generation also snaps in half, just like the first one. Probably because Apple changed nothing. To be fair though, the iPad Pro does cost less than an iPhone, with four times the real estate. So durability just probably isn't one of Apple's main focuses with this thing. At least now we know it is fragile though, and we can take the necessary steps to protect it. You're probably asking, hey Jerry, did you make this entire video just so the eagle would flap its wings? Maybe. Things might get a bit dangerous. For both the phone and your bum. As we can see, the phone screen is indeed made of glass, with cracks running along the entire surface. And now, only the bottom strip of the screen below that crack is still working. The Lifephone 2 does not survive the bin test. A gaming phone should be even more durable than a regular phone. And keep in mind during this bin test that I'm not even using all of my fingers right now. Unfortunately, with the very first bend, we see some pretty major cracking along the antenna line near the bottom half of the phone. And that small crack, for some reason, has catastrophically affected the internal vibrator. Which now sounds more like a hissing cat than anything else. With another bend from the front, we lose the entire screen. At that same weak point, that antenna line. The Victus glass in the front is still intact, it's just the display under the glass that has given up the ghost. One billion colors are gone in an instant. This, of course, is not an ideal situation. A phone without a screen is like a car without tires. Finally, we'll flip the phone around to the back and try one more time. And right there next to the center USB-C and accessory port, we find another weak point in the frame. And just like Apple's iPad, it's game over for the ROG Phone 5. May he rest in peace, says. There are some weird shapes and structural designs going on, and, well... Turns out there is a weaker gaming phone than the ROG Phone 5. The Legion Phone Dual 2, with its two speakers, two fans, and two batteries, is now most definitely in two pieces. The display is shattered and destroyed underneath that Gorilla Glass 5, which surprisingly is still intact. It turns out it's a clean snap right along that antenna line, which match up on either side of the glass hump. Unfortunately though, these same antenna lines are also symmetrically mirrored at the other end of the camera mountain, which means the Legion Phone 2 is now the Legion Phone 3, as in it's in three pieces. I think it's time we find out how structurally sound a carbon fiber smartphone really is, since smartphones are some of the most accidentally abused pieces of technology on the planet. Sliding a Carbon 1 into your back pocket and sitting down with the screen curving along with your curves would leave the phone mostly fine. No cracks or permanent damage, just some pretty major flex. It's the bending from the other direction that we'll need to watch out for. Carbon fiber is not so strong around its third axes, perpendicular to those fibers. This phone is officially totaled and does not survive my durability test. It's time to assess the structural integrity of the phone as a whole, as I always do with the bend test. If you ever hear noises during this portion of the video, it's usually a bad thing. And none of those were good noises. The volcanic black frosted back has been thoroughly cracked. The phone is still alive though, which is good. Let's bend the OnePlus 10 Pro from the other direction. And now, except for the flashlight, the OnePlus 10 Pro is definitely not alive anymore. To the bin test. OnePlus has done a redesign, shifting from aluminum to plastic. And at first, it looks like all those changes might have paid off. No structural damage or cracked glass. So far, it's lasted longer than the 10 Pro. At least until we flip it over. Same spot, right at the camera lens. Which is rather unfortunate. I was rooting for this one. And we might as well keep going. Once again, the 10T fractures along the same line as the 10 Pro, right along the top of the battery. Notice though, the screen pulling its own weight with an almost 90 degree bend and still in one piece. Wait, I guess going a full 90 is a bad idea. 
Historically, most phones do survive my durability tests, but at first glance, since ROG hasn't changed anything structurally from last year's catastrophe, I don't have high hopes for this year. I guess if nothing changes, then nothing changes. We can go straight to the bin test. You might be thinking that iPads are weak and of course they'll break, but in fact, the most recent iPad Pro survived, along with the older iPad Mini. It too survived the bin test. This iPad 10th generation, however, should not be put in a back pocket. With a tablet this thin, the bin test should also be interesting. With the price of an iPad, let's hope this Kindle scribe is durable. And you gotta admit, that was some pretty hefty flex with some serpent-like curvature, yet the e-ink display is still totally functional. The frame is a bit crinkly now, but no catastrophic damage has occurred so far. Super impressive. Bending from the front, however, yields different results. While no physical cracks have appeared, it does look like half of the display is now unresponsive. Black and white streaks running down from the right side corners, but the left half of the tablet is still displaying text, although unresponsive. The final frontier for our folding phone is the bin test. Folding shut normally, even after everything we've done, the phone is still very functional. However, one simple fold in the wrong direction and the pixel fold folds right on over backwards, annihilating the center screen right along the crease. A small portion of the left side is still attempting to function, but there's no lockout or stoppage of that backward motion like we see on Samsung's fold and flip series. With the inner flexible screen pulled out of alignment, it will now not fold shut anymore either. Now, you might think that this would be embarrassing for Google, who broadcast to the world that this is the most durable hinge ever, But in their defense, if you look very close, it's not the hinge that failed, it's actually the rest of the phone. The hinge itself is still in one piece, and it's the antenna line near the SIM card tray, and another antenna line on the longer side of the phone that did the buckling, which then allowed the center screen to stretch and break open. So definitely nice work to the Google Hinge design team, it's just the rest of the phone that's not pulling its own weight. Even the internal battery is kinked, which makes me actually kind of nervous. With the screen protector and good case on your phone, you won't have anything to worry about. With the phone being plastic, I am slightly nervous about its structural integrity, but when bent from the front, we see some ginormous flexing, and even some audible cracking, but no visible damage to the screen or body, yet. Bending from the backside, it also has quite a bit of flex, but again, no catastrophic damage. It's only after the third bend, with more force than would ever be reasonably applied to a smartphone, that the screen starts to crack losing all functionality, with pixels perpetually and permanently parked at their prior points of photonic perception. 